the great legend himself, Dirk Nowitzki. The book is The Great Nowitzki, Basketball and the Meaning of Life. Good morning, Dirk. How are you, man? Good morning, guys. How's it going? It's going okay. Uh, do you miss playing baseball with, with, with the radio station, emceeing your event? I see in the book <laughs> that you love 95-degree weather out there in Frisco. Do you miss the celebrity event? Uh, I do. It's been two years now. We uh, we we had to cancel it. Uh, it's always such a, a a fun event. It's such a, a a family outing, really. You know, with 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 being the game being uh, so loved in, in in the Frisco area there, and uh, so many people have a sellout the last two years. So uh, I do miss it, and hopefully uh, we can put it back on uh, this year. Uh, we'll we'll see if uh, if it works out. Of the non professionals. Who had the best swing or game, and <laughs> and who had the worst? Well, uh, I'm uh, I'm definitely the the worst. I have no <laughs> no core strength. My, you know, I'm way too long, so it's uh, I'm definitely up there as as being one of the worst. Uh, there's some some guys that surprised me. Even even some of the Cowboys guys are, are great athletes. Uh, probably multiple sports athletes. Uh, I remember Dwight Powell had a really good swing, and he's really strong. He had a really good hit one year, and so um, there's uh, there's some guys that uh, that are that are halfway decent. I, I, I love that some of the guys got so competitive during that. I remember Jordan Spieth one year; he made like a diving catch. I'm like, dude, you literally have the U.S. Open in ten days. What are <laughs> you doing? I remember. I remember he he was going hard. There's some other oh. Was it was it Des Bryant one year or Zeke maybe that like did a sliding thing in the in the in the home base and uh, you know we're always a little worried once once the competitive juices start flowing yeah. you know it's uh, it's dangerous out there. One time I uh, I didn't pay attention you know they they always throw the ball to first base but in, in the meantime I was talking to somebody and then somebody threw the ball at me and nailed me in my thigh I was. I was really lucky. It could have gone a lot worse if it was a little higher. It was a little higher, or even towards the head. I mean, I was I was super lucky. So I mean, baseball is not is not completely uh, not dangerous. Who was the non professional hooper who who has impressed you the most? Have you seen them playing pickup or shot around with you? Is is it is it Romo by far? Like who else? Who else celebrity wise can, can play? Uh, I'd have to think about it. Uh, Romo was definitely good. I mean, he's got a little shot. He got a little in-between game. I guess he played in, in high school uh, uh, growing up. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, there is a couple big guys. Uh, John Isner, the tennis player, uh, he played. Uh, he's, a, he's a big guy. He's about 6'10". Yeah. And I think he played in high school. So he's got a, he's got a few skills. He's got a little jimmy and... Uh, I'm not sure who who else, but everybody usually grows up a little bit playing basketball here, so they all have some sort of a shot and it can dribble a little bit. All right, Dirk. Speaking of of tennis, yeah, because you mentioned six ten in tennis, right? Yeah. Like that's that, that's that's big for tennis, is it not? Yeah. Since since, since I first got to town uh, and I heard you played tennis, I said I, I wanted a piece of Dirk out there on the court. I am a mixed doubles high school state champion. Uh, so I have Ooh, <laughs> mixed, doubles, talk to me. mixed doubles, baby. There you go. Oh, I've been waiting for the invite to the tournament. So I know you got the, I know you got the crazy serve, but give me the other scouting report on, on Dirk's game. Is it a slice backhand? Is it two hand? Is it, is it the top spin one hander? Can you go get to the net? Give, give me the scouting report. You know, my, my game evolved over the years. Uh, I was uh, I was really good junior. I was even traveling through Germany and, and playing big tournaments. I was ranked in my area at the time, and and uh, and then once I just started to go all in on on basketball, I kind of you know stopped playing tennis for a good 10, 12 years and barely played anymore. And, and then I lost it all. I used to have a nice uh, double handed backhand uh, and. All of it was gone. So now I kind of hack my back end one handed, some slice, some <laughs> some top spin. Obviously, I got a, I got a big forehand and a big serve. Other than that, uh, the movement is not my strength. Yeah. Coming to the net yeah. is not. I drop uh, shot. I, I just drop shot you all day. Oh, yeah, all day long, especially <laughs> now where I have some health issues <laughs> after 21 years running up and down the, uh, the court. So uh, I'm, my movement is definitely not my thing. Uh, it's it's basically I'm trying to overpower you with a serve and a big forehand, and then the rest uh, is is, uh, is 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 really bad. <laughs> the great Nowitzki is the book. Uh, Dirk is joining us here on 105 through the fan.
Were you just too tall at the end for tennis? You know, I always I have a, a photo at home with, with the guy, um, and I, I I played him all the time. I played him in one of the finals, and we do a picture together. And I'm literally double the size. He's he's probably going down to my hip, but I must have been like 12 years old or something. And I, I got to say, I felt more comfortable around basketball guys. You know, we're all tall. You know, obviously kids make fun of each other and, and being so big and so tall. Um, you know, I just felt more comfortable around, around taller guys, around basketball. It was a team sport. Uh, that, that made me uh, feel more comfortable. So uh, for me, it was just an easy decision to stay with basketball because I was so freakish, freakish tall. So that, that didn't help <laughs> in, in tennis. But now everybody is a lot bigger now in, in tennis. And, um, you know, we have six, nine, six, ten players everywhere. But uh, back in the days, that was definitely a rare. What sport direction does it look like your kids are going in? And how do you feel about like the specialization? RJ and Troy are at 9 p.m., you know, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. baseball tournaments and they're driving, you know, the crazy practice hours yeah. and, you know, only focus know. on one. Where, where, where's the Nowitzki family falling with that? Well, I, I, you know, I did a complete opposite. I played at, at one time, I played three sports at the same time with, with handball, tennis, and basketball. And so, um, I, I did it the other way. I didn't specialize for basketball until I was really 14, 15. I mean, I started when I was 12, then I played tennis and basketball at the same time for a couple more years. And um, so I, I kind of want to see what, what they want to do. You know, I don't want to force them into anything. Uh, so far, they, uh, the boys play uh, tennis and soccer, and um, the daughter does tennis and gymnastics. Um, so We'll see. Nobody plays basketball yet. I mean, they enjoy it a little bit to play on uh, on our court a little bit, but uh, they don't really play so far. They're still a little too young. But we'll see what they have a uh, passion for later. I don't really want to, you know, push them into anything or push them into any decisions if they want to be uh, pro athletes or something or, or uh, you know, get get uh, really into it that's that's fine I'll support it and if not that's that's fine too I think uh, I don't I don't I want to handle it like my parents did and that's that's just support and and and, and whatever they choose I'm, I'm here to support is there a sport because you mentioned handball is there a sport in Europe that's popular that you wish was more popular here in the U.S. Well, handball is one. Uh, I think it's actually a great sport um, handball here when 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 I got to the U.S. over 20 years ago I told the guys, you yeah, know, I'm I'm big in handball, and they thought it's the the game where you put a glove on and you hammer the ball against the wall, almost like a squash. And I'm like, no, this is not handball. Handball is like almost like soccer, but played with the hands. You know, you have mm -hmm. you have the goals. Uh, you throw outside the circle. There's a goalie who's trying to prevent the ball from going in. And, it's a really cool sport. Uh, so my dad was a very big handball player. And so that, that was one of my first sports that, that I played. I learned to throw when I was like two, three years old. And, uh, and so I love that sport. When I was in the Olympics, I tried to catch as much as I can. And, uh, actually, Germany has one of the best uh, leagues in the world right now. They have, the, they have a great Bundesliga there. So it's, it's a huge sport in, in Europe, uh, and, and it's just not on the radar here at all. I think a little bit in the Northeast they play it. Um, but I, I wish that that is one sport that's, that's super fun to watch. So you're you're you know a, a pretty private guy. You've never really been known for wanting the attention and the limelight. And now you have uh, this book out. Well, what what did you want to convey the most uh, in this book? Well, what do you think a lot of Mavs fans will get the most out of in reading it? Uh, you know, good question. I mean, the writer came up to me. I, I've I've known the writer for a while, Thomas. Uh, he was a, he wrote some articles on me before. I knew he is, he's more of a novelist, not really a sports writer, but he has a sports background. So he came up to me uh, after the championship with this idea of just having, having a nice book project, following me around for a few years of my end of my career, and then just, you know, chronicle some, some things uh, at the end, and it'll be, a, it'll be a fun project. So I was like, I like you, Thomas. I think you do good work. You're a great writer, so let's do it. Not knowing at the time that I was going to play another eight or nine years, right? So <laughs> he, he wanted to finish the project in like two, three years. And then uh, I'm like, I signed another deal and then a, another two or three year deal. And he's like, well, I can't finish the book now without getting your end of the career in, right? So he, 
I ended up playing eight more years. So he really <laughs> followed me for for eight years at the end. And he was he was part of my crew, part of my entourage. He was traveling with me in the summer to to stuff. Uh, he was at all my big events here in, in Dallas. I mean, he was at all my foundation events. I mean, he's he had a really good look at at, at my world, so to speak. And uh, and so I think he he did a nice job, kind of describing it from from the outside and from the inside, and he talked to everybody. And so I think it's just a, a nice little look in the in the in, in athletes athletes world, and I think it's it's a nice little read. And and like I said, he is not a, a so called sports writer, so it's not another you know sports book or sports biography. This is more, this is uh, of him looking into my world and trying to describe it. And I think he, he did a good job. You know, I, I think one of the reasons that, you know, all the Metroplex loves you so much is just the, the humbleness and, you know, you don't act like you're Dirk Nowitzki. Uh, so uh, a, a question, a question that some, some parents have texted in is, how how is he so humble? Like what 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 lessons are you going to try to convey? And is it can you teach it to your kids of achieving a lot but remaining humble and staying grounded? Uh, what what's what's the secret to that? That is that is sweet. Thank you. Um, I didn't say I, it. It was from the listeners, Dirk. Yeah, yeah, of course, <laughs> not you, not you. Um, I think it was it was my parents that uh, that you know always. Uh, try to raise me the right way, ra raise me with with having respect, um, ha raise me with have humility, and then I think it's a little bit of of my personality too. I'm I'm a shy guy. I'm I'm always um, I even growing up I wasn't sure am, am I good enough? Am I worthy of this? And so I think it is, it is a little bit of a combination of how I grew up and and my personality that uh, you know. I'm almost a little embarrassed at times when when things happen to me. It's just uh, I think that was my also my personality. So uh, I'd love to you know teach to, to my kids. Of course, I want them to be confident in this world and and know what they stand for and know what they want. But I also want them to understand that you know you're not better than the next guy. You know you, uh, you respect your uh other people that live in this world and, and so hopefully i can i can do a good job but you know it's it's a full-time job being a parent and, and raising them trying to raise them the right way Derek Novitsky joining us in the diamond factory hotline uh one, one of the big knocks against the mavericks and one of the things we get upset about is as a fan base is we can't get free agents when no one wants to come and play for dallas what is your response to that and and with your personality did you go out and recruit? Was there a big regret you had of a guy that was a target where you said, I could have done that, I could have done more? Did you did you recruit? Did you not recruit? And what's your response, Dirk, to the the Mavs can't get uh, a big free agent? I guess it's 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 harder than it looks, honestly. Um, you know, we always thought uh, I think the big decision was obviously after we won the championship. Then there was the lockout, then we decided uh to let some of those guys go. And go for cap space, and I think that's well documented. This was, you know, ten plus years ago, and I think at the time even Mark said it's the right move to do. But looking back now, I think it's more important to have assets, to have pieces, uh, than to go for cap space all the time. And and so that that really hasn't hasn't worked out well for us. Um, but you know, I think we have a, a you know set up now where you have a young star, you have a new coach, a young coach, a player's coach, you have new management. So uh, I've used, you got to keep going forward. And if you have to get better through draft, uh, through uh, free agency, you can get better through trade. So there's all sorts of things you can get better at. But I think with Luca, obviously you have this huge piece now you can, you can build around and, and people uh, would want to, would want to play with. Um, so did I recruit at the time? I did. Uh, I don't think I was great at it. Uh, you know, uh, back in the days, we, we traveled to L.A. We, we tried to get uh, Dwight Howard uh, that year. We did uh, LaMarcus Aldridge and uh, a couple other guys uh, in the following years. Um, it was hard for me to sit there and just, you know, <laughs> yeah. hey, you know, come to Dallas, you know. <laughs> You either you either want to come play or you don't. You know you either you know come and look at the city. It's, 
you know, does you sit, you know, it's, it's important that, you, that your family likes it, you feel comfortable. Uh, uh, but, you know, I'm not going to sit there and, and, and basically tell you how great it is. You know, it's, <laughs> you don't want to come play or, or you don't. So I wasn't, I wasn't necessarily great at this whole recruiting thing. You either you're the in or you out. Who recruited you the hardest? You know, I, I, you know, while I played, I, I wanted to obviously finish my career here. So the only time um, when I thought about leaving was pre-championship. When, when we didn't win it, we didn't win it. I was 10 plus years now at the league at this point. Uh, and I was thinking, you know, is there, am I going to win the championship here or am I going to go somewhere? And so... Uh, there was, uh, I remember Kobe tried to get me to come to LA at some point, uh, you know, Stevie was reaching out to me uh, at some point, but, you know, then I signed that, uh, that four year deal. I would, I think I mentioned that in, in my Jersey retirement, I was a free agent in 2010, really for the first time. And, and I went to Mark's house and, you know, there was no agent involved. He said, come to my house, we'll figure it out. And then we both kind of like went through stuff and how close we were and, uh, and all the disappointments. And we both got super emotional and, and had tears in our eyes. And and, and I told him, I want to be here. He wanted me here. And then we signed it or agreed on the, on the four-year extension. And then we won, ended up winning the championship in, in year one of that deal. So uh, which obviously was uh, even way better than planned, and mm -hmm. that was uh, that was amazing. So, and after that, really, there was no no need for me to leave. I always wanted to be here. I wanted to um, to be loyal to the to the to the city, and it, it worked out great that way. How do you look at you know the difference in in teams? Like you know, you got the one title, but to us. You know, it's probably the most special title of our of our lifetime that we can remember. You know, it was it was it was won a different way and against and against the super team. Yeah, right. So, how do you weigh? You know, all right, I got my one title, or I could have teamed up with somebody and gotten three. Uh, you know, like how do you, how do you look at that? Well, you know, I think everybody has to you know know what's best for him and create their own journey. Uh, for me, it was being on one team. Uh, I'm, I'm a loyal guy. I always have been. Uh, the way I got treated from from the fans when I got here, and then Mark buying the team and the relationship we had, and and so uh, to me it was uh, it was my family felt you know wanted and loved here, and so um, for me it was kind of a, a no brainer, and that worked for me. It's but it's hard for me to sit here and say, uh, you know, this guy should do such and such. I think they're, he, everybody has to know what's best for them. People always ask me, how do you get to the NBA? What's the best way? There's, everybody has to find their own way. Is it college? Is it going through Europe? Is it, you know, going to the G League now, not even after high school? There are so many things that uh, you have to weigh in, have your mentors, your, your family weigh in on what's best, and, and then you have to make a decision for yourself. But um, I understand, of course, that the business has changed a little bit, and, and, and now the, 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 the nature of the league is a little bit of teaming up and trying to win it all. And uh, we, uh, That was a little different uh, in the early 2000s. Um, so, you know, it's just uh, the game and, and, and the league evolves and it's it's part of it now. But for me, my way is is, uh, is what I would work for me. And that was staying in, in one franchise. I think, you know, we see some parallels between your 2011 team and this Mavericks team with the one mm. superstar and not really having like the number two or number three. If you were a GM or how do you view Dirk? Because to me, I was like, they're not going to win it in 2011. They got to beat the Lakers, and they got to go through the heat, and there's super teams. And then this year, I'm like, Luka is, like, amazing, but, you know, they're not going to make it to the Western Conference Finals. You need more than that. 2011, was that was, that was lightning in a bottle. How do you view that, Dirk, in terms of team building of one and maybe special guys around you or one and, like, the right guys around you? Yeah, I mean, it kind of depends. Uh, you know, you always want another, you know, you want as many superstars on, on the team as you can get, but that also sometimes doesn't work out. You know, as, as you see with numerous examples, I'm not going to name teams, but when, <laughs> uh, you know, there's some, some superstars and, you know, they're a little sensitive. They got all the egos, any touches and points and uh, that always doesn't work out. So, you know, uh, if, if, if the egos clash, then it is better to have one 
alpha dog and have every every role defined like we had in 11 or or this team now has um and and everybody else playing you know right up to their level and and even raise their level and and do their job to their best uh and have unbelievable role players um you know so i think that's the case that we have obviously now with with luca having the ball in his hands a lot um, but it helps to have Jalen. It helped uh, Spencer has been great and give him some relief, give him take some pressure off Luca to make plays all the time. Uh, and they can make plays off the dribble or when he's off the off the court and uh, and everybody else, you know, the uh, is rotating, they're athletic. We can we can defend right now. So I think we have a really fun team. I tweeted it the other day last week. Uh, that were really fun to watch. How we how we scramble on defense, super athletic. Everybody's rotating for each other, and and on offense, just find find a play. You know, have Luca create, or you know, Jalen and Spencer create. Everybody else is kind of playing off them. So, I think it's 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 a fun team. I'm not gonna say uh, that we're you know a championship caliber of a team, but we'll we'll see what happens. I think if if we stay healthy, and you know, of course, it hurts that Tim went down. You know what. With his uh, broke his foot, I think he's uh, he was still a big part of the big shot maker. Especially we're looking forward to the playoffs. But you know, um, I think we have a, a good team, and it should be a should be a fun ride. Is it true? But if you look at the West, I mean, honestly, it's going to be tough whoever you face. Uh, there there is some tough competition. Uh, even in the first round, you can have a, a, a killer matchup. So uh, it's 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 going to be it's going to be fun. Is it true that you gave uh, Luca the? singing sing a song advice to yeah. calm down with the refs and if so what was what was your song you know i i try i tried to mentor uh him a little bit <laughs> obviously he's so good already he's he's already better now uh than than i ever was and he's he's so mature already that it's kind of hard for me to 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 really you know tell him something because he's he's just so good and so mature already but you know certain things that i see i i, I talked to him about it and he, he seems to be open for it and so uh there was there was this thing that i tried to do and, and i remember uh i used to talk a lot about it in, in the 06 final run when i said how you know how do you make these big free throws and i said you know just to take some pressure off my of myself and get my mind free i sometimes sing a song <laughs> and it helps me calm down and it gets me you know in a, in a good place and i'm not like tense and thinking about certain stuff or get too emotional and and so i did i did tell luca that secret one time and in like really tense moments or uh in, in moments when he's about to you know take somebody's head off <laughs> uh just you know just uh smile and and maybe interact with the teammates or put something else in your mind and uh and we'll, we'll see if it works or if it has worked for him um but uh you know this this kid is is, is so special at the, the i mean the sky's the limit and what was yours you know, I was at the time. I remember when I was doing that in 06, I was uh, I, I kept singing uh, Mr. Jones. Uh, by kind of <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why, but that was my go to at the time. But like I said, this was almost 20 years ago, 15, 16 years ago. <laughs> That was that was my song. Man. I even knew how to play a little bit on the on the guitar, Mister Jones and me. So uh, uh, that that was my song at the time. And then after that, it was kind of a little bit of everything. I remember. So I think it was one of the the guys when I told that story that um, that I, I sang a song. They knew David Hasselhoff was big at the time in Germany, so he's like David Hasselhoff. And then I re repeated it. And then it was a huge deal, Dirk singing David Hasselhoff, which which was not true. It was obviously a joke. But then <laughs> I remember in 06 in the finals, I have a big free throw, the end of game three or game four. And behind the band, uh, behind the basket, they had the David Hasselhoff, uh, the, the, the head cut out. And I'm like, this is this is going way too far. But uh, it, was, it was fun while it lasted. Uh, real quick, I always wanted to ask you this. Did you ever think about Playing college basketball in the U.S. because you went to did you go to Coach K's yeah, final the Duke game. home game? I did. I I, uh, I did not go visit Duke. Uh, that kind of happened because uh, I always wanted to go to a game in Cameron Indoor. I heard it's a great arena. It's a small little place, and, uh, and the atmosphere is amazing. So uh, I got offered through some friends. I went to Duke to to go to that game, and uh, was of course like yeah, I'm, 
I have no affiliation really with Duke, but first of all, uh, you know, Coach K is a legend. It'll be an amazing atmosphere at his last game. So I went and it was, uh, it was, it was fantastic. You know, I got a tour of, uh, of the campus and then tour of Cameron indoors. And it was, uh, it was amazing. Uh, you know, just for that night, uh, it's unfortunate that UNC won because that completely killed the vibe <laughs> at the end. I mean, completely, the, the place was dead. Uh, and, and so, uh, but that was, that was cool to go. I always uh, talk about, when I talk to teammates over my 20 years, they always say that one or two years in college was amazing. So uh, sometimes I do regret uh, that, that I didn't try it for one year. Obviously, it worked out perfect the way I did it. Um, but that's one thing I, I do miss the, the, a little bit, maybe the camaraderie in college and, and how tight how tight knit the groups are. Um, I did visit a few college when uh, right after high school. I actually had to join the army for for ten months. It was mandatory still at the time, and uh, at the time they let me travel a little bit to the U.S. And then I got to visit some colleges. I looked at Stanford. I looked at Cal and I looked at Kentucky at the time with, with Tubby Smith. They had just come off uh, the championship with Scott Padgett. I think McGlore was there at the time. So they had a really good team. And I, I loved all the spots. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I would have gotten into Stanford with my uh, <laughs> with the SAT that I took. Uh, it was a little low. Uh, but, uh, you know, I loved all the spots and I'm not – I guess I'm lucky I didn't really have to choose one. Uh, you know, the I was really impressed. I remember with, with Kentucky at the time, the dorm that they had, they had a playroom downstairs, the pool table. I mean, the setup they had already back then, this was like late, late 90s, was almost like a pro setup. Uh, I can't, I don't even know what they have now. I can't even imagine, but um, that uh, that was that was really impressive. Well, look, man, it was an honor to have you on finally. The great Nowitzki basketball and the meaning of life. Basic just popped in and said, make sure to give him props. It's his influence that Giannis and Embiid and Joker are up there. Luca in the MVP. You can say you love him, Mike. Pop it on real quick. So Basic just wanted to come in and, and tell you that, Dirk. <laughs> oh, tell him I said hello, yeah. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. Thank you so I much. Love you, I love you, Dirk. <laughs> You're the best. <laughs> Thank you. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Dirk. Good luck with the book, man.